now then, welcome back to another episode on the Hypermine Unstable server. Well, I've done a little bit more work around here. I've put a ceiling in. It's not necessarily the final ceiling, but it is a ceiling and I can deal with it. And the floor, it's not exactly a designed floor, but it is a floor. So I've tidied the place up a little bit. And that's just to keep me my ease of working in the area i don't need to work on the ceiling and i don't need to work on the floor until after i've done all the machines and storage and i don't need to work on the arches with all the chisel and bits and all that kind of funky stuff until after i've got everything in the right places but what i do need is to get rid of bare stone and obvious bits of unfinished stuff while i'm working in here because i just keep <laughs> i just kept wanting to, to do something with the floor and the ceiling. I just wanted... So, all right. Okay. Well, let's just put something basic in and get it over and done with and then come back to it another day. And that is what I've done. Basic. Uh, I've uh, sorted this out. Uh, this is what we kind of worked on last episode where we did an auto cobble. We've got cobble coming in from the back here. Uh, automatic cobble generator. I've put some more of these power grid... Um, lava generator things in here so I've got six power coming in off that one lava I've got cobblestone coming in off that one lava all going into the back all wired up nicely so the cobble comes into this which is a compacting drawer so it compacts it so I can store lots and lots and lots in there uh, let's have a look I've got uh, yeah like 9,500 and counting in there at the minute uh, and then the sag mill will automatically pull from there. So it'll pull the cobblestone out into this slot and grind it down into flint, um, flint, gravel and sand. There's the occasional byproduct of sand. What I've got going on then is it pushes it into this block here, which divides it amongst all the drawers, wherever it's supposed to go in the system. The, uh, the flint is now here. And I've got a pipe on the back there that takes the flint out of there and puts it into that sag mill and that sag mill into this slot here to improve production. Uh, the bay, the main output is 100%, uh, 120%, bonus output 125%, power reduction 15%. So it actually makes a big difference to use the flint up in that. The gravel then goes there and the sand goes there because it's all connected via the drawers. Uh, up here we've got the gravel being pulled out of that frame draw into here and then it uses the gravel up and the flint up to make sand and then the sand goes into here it goes out into that one into there so all in all i'm making infinite sand gravel flint and cobblestone all in this area and uh, the only thing i probably want to avoid is flint if there's too much flint at the minute there's only 27 flint so i've got plenty of flint still I've still got plenty of ability to use the flint as well because the flint gets constantly used in here. So all in all, that's pretty good. And all I've used to link it all up around the back here is put some oak trims connecting the top blocks over the top and back down to the other top blocks. So as long as all of these com uh, storage drawers are connected in some way, they will uh, distribute amongst the whole setup, which is why we've got a couple here as well. And then that's the Ender I.O. taking the flint out and putting it into the two machines. All nice and easy, all nice and situated now. I'm happy with it. And that then has given me a load of materials, which is good. And I've sorted all this out again to change it around. I've now got two empty drawers where I move this gravel and the flint over here. And I think, yeah, I've added in bricks because of the clay progression into bricks i got glass here. I'll probably do two different types of glass in there. So glass panes and glass something. I don't know. Uh, but still, uh, the, the things that I want to work on at the minute, I've got so many different things I want to work on. I've been messing around with things like this storage scanner to have a look to see how much stuff I've got in my drawers easily just to see what I've got left over. You can also grab this out of there as well by double-clicking it and taking it out. So I can use this to take anything out of the system that's connected to i can actually make it scan up to 20 blocks and that's 20 blocks away from it in all directions so i can scan over to that side so i can make this one storage scanner actually be able to pick things out of those over there 
Uh, but when I'm using the storage drawers and you can see everything and it looks good, the only real reason I've got this in here at the minute is to be able to see the amounts, the quantities. Uh, because I can grab them from wherever I want them, whenever I want them, and I can put them away how I want them, whenever I want them. Like, I just put that away. And, yeah, so there's that. What, what I've been considering, right, is quarries. And this controller is not the thing. At the minute, in this pack, there is no quarries whatsoever. But the RF Tools Shape Card Quarry... Is something new for 195 I believe or 194 should I say uh, that wasn't in the previous versions of RF tools uh, but now it is and I'm guessing that's because it's the latest upgrade it's changed it around a bit the block that we use I was actually told on stream during last hypermine Wednesday uh, and I'm only just getting around to doing anything about it if I can find it that'd be good so it's a builder block anyway. It's a builder that thing. Builder block. The builder block is simple enough to make. Bricks, redstone, ender pearl, and a machine frame. Easy enough to make. And then it has lots and lots of options to move things around and swap things about. Which is very, very good. Very, very good. Uh, it has all sorts of other bits and pieces that we can use, such as these things. The shape chambers, we need those, which are, again, simple enough to build. The controller, which is a shape chamber with a couple of bits, easy to build again. So all of that's easy to build. And then the quarry stuff, like um, the quarry card, that looks fairly simple to build as well, really. The shape card, yep, yeah, I've got all the things we need to do, all the things that I want to do. So the quarry is a possibility, but with a quarry, of course, I'm going to need power. To power the quarry. Otherwise I may as well be uh, hitting it with sticks. Because it's not going to quarry anything is it? So I've got to start on qu quarry power or power first. And I figured I would do a little power source down here. Based on lava. Because we've got a lot of lava down in these lower reaches. I've got a big lava lake over there as well. Which means that I can start um, tanking it all up and all that kind of stuff. And also, uh, one thing we're not producing is obsidian down here. And we use obsidian for things and stuff. So I'd like obsidian to be block storage down here as well. So obsidian's a thing. Um, and that leads me on to advanced generators. Uh, uh, advanced generators. Here we go. So there are lots and lots of options with advanced generators and I've been looking through them all figuring out what kind of power supply I want to create. And the two factors, the lava and the obsidian factors, have steered me into making a, a steam turbine. A steam turbine. So to generate steam, I need to generate steam. Yeah, to generate steam, I need to generate steam. Uh, to make power from the steam turbine controller. To do that, I need a heat exchanger, which changes from, let's say, lava, and heats up water to make steam. So that's the first sort of thing I'm going to make. Uh, most of these bits here that you'll see, iron frame, easy. Uh, redstone wiring, easy. Circuit controller, easy. Everything is easy to make. It's just time consuming to make all the stuff. So I'm going to make it all off camera. I'm not going to be making it all now. Uh, the heat exchanger. We're going to need things like fluid intake to receive fluid. Which is just some more of that iron stuff. Uh, we're going to need a fluid output. Which is also very simple. And then we're going to need things like um, a heating chamber. Uh, which is that heat exchanger. This ex heat exchanger, I can have 1 to 50 of them. And that is also a simple recipe with this iron tubing. It does take a lot of iron tubing and stuff, but you make 16 for 2 iron ingots, so it's not so bad. So I've got all that to make, heat exchanger and stuff. And then there's a few other bits and pieces which I'm not sure that I need or don't need right now that I will work out on. So first up, I need to make a heat exchanger to make steam and then transfer the steam over to the steam turbine steam turbine looks simple enough to make as well 
And again, with a steam turbine, I'm going to need a fluid intake. And I'm going to need a power output, which is somewhere around here. Flux generator. I think that might be right. Flux generator. The only thing different here is this power I.O. model, which is just a couple of pistons and a few bits and pieces. So it's all very, very simple to make. All very simple to craft. It's just going to be time consuming to set up. And I don't necessarily know how much lava I'm going to need per water to make it all work. Uh, I figure I'm going to build it over here though. If I build it over here, then my power output can come straight to the machines that I'm going to have on this wall. Such as the sag mill and all that kind of stuff can get the power directly from this. And the lava then also goes into the, uh, the, the smeltery. So yeah. Time to make some stuff and things. Uh, one thing that I didn't tell you about was the NYO Reservoir. I need to make uh, infinite water move around and I reckon Reservoir is the easiest way to do so. So there's a Reservoir. Put a Reservoir there. If I connect it to another Reservoir, I think I can make an infinite water source and then select an output from it. Alright, well... This is the basic setup, very, very rough and ready. Um, back here, we've got a fluid intake valve for it, and it's receiving fluid from there and fluid from there into here. So that puts the water and the lava in. The water's got a water reserve here, which produces one bucket per tick in an infinite source that outputs into this tank. And of course, I'm going to have to put the lava from those tanks into here and go and collect and fill up all tanks and all that kind of stuff. Putting the lava in is my long haul. Uh, the water reservoir system seems to work fine. Then we've got the controller that controls it all and makes it a multi-block structure. Two heat exchangers. I can put more in there. I can put up to, I don't know, 50, something like that. I know you can do 50 turbines to generate more heat and all that. And then I've got a fluid output which will output the steam in theory and it's currently producing 60 steam and all that i do need to have a solid output item output and um, out output there i think i need to have this out output port to output the obsidian into a barrel of some kind just to get rid of the obsidian because i'm presuming when it blocks up that's it it's done uh, I can add more and more bits and pieces to that, but that's working, that's functioning. And then I'm tra transferring via fluid conduct uh, at half a bucket per tick, I think it is, through there. 500 uh, millibuckets into a fluid intake on the steam turbine. And I've got two iron steam turbines. Iron steam turbines need... Um, well, they, they need a, a few bits and pieces of materials, whereas you can increase these and you can have up to 50 of them. And you can also change them to gold, which is slightly better RF per tick and enderium and all sorts of other ones. But I've just went for iron just to get started down here. We've got the controller to put it all together and we've got a flux generator, which I believe outputs flux. So I'm going to test that one out. Uh, but from here, with those two generators, we are generating 200 RF per tick. The turbine is running at 3,000 RPM, and it's full of RF already. It's only taking in 60 megabuckets per tick of steam at the moment, and that is enough just to keep it topped up at 200 RF a tick. So that's 60 for 2 RF a tick, and this one over here is outputting the 60, but I believe it's producing quite a bit more really so i should be able to balance these out by adding more exchanges and turbines and bits and pieces to make this uh, a very pleasing device uh, i'm thinking of having this turbine controller all set up in here as you can see though the best thing is it's a multi-block but you don't have to have them connected in a particular way so i've got the multi-block structure being et out of there by that and i've got this pipe coming into the multi-block structure so you don't have to have it 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 all just connects and if it's a connecting block then it's a multi-block structure which is pretty epic just need to play around with it a little bit more 200 rf per tick is not enough but that's not bad for a start is it okay so overall i've got eight corners of a cube that i'm going to create with this space 
chamber controller type thing. And that's going to then use the builder's block with some energy to power it and do some stuff. But I do need to give it a quarry upgrade first. And the quarry upgrade's here. Um, space card quarry. Quarry silk. Quarry fortune. Quarry clearing. Quarry clearing silk. Quarry clearing fortune. Now, I presume that these are more expensive. So uh, a clearing qu quarry will need the quarry card surrounded by glass. That will clear it out and void it, I guess. So the basics here. Is this a dirt clearing quarry? And then it adds dirt. And uh, da, 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 da. it's quite quite a large area, and it's 300 RF per tick, per block. Wow, and that one's 500 RF per tick per block. Mm hmm. So it's quite a lot of RF it's going to need to actually uh, empty out an area, but still, it's going to be worth it because it's the only quarry we've got. A fortune quarry requires all sorts of things, gas tiers and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not going to go fortune quarry. Silk quarry requires a nether star. So I'm just going to have a basic quarry by the looks of it. Okay, so now I've got my quarry card and all of that kind of stuff. I've got all this stuff over here. I think there's one thing I'm short of, but I'm not 100% sure what it is. I think there's something I need to link this space chamber to, um, to do something else. But I think that might be for copying uh, or moving stuff. I don't know if I'm going to need it for cutting stuff out in a quarry. I'll go and make one if I need one. But for right now, let's see about setting this up. So I'm going to try and clean out an area inside here. So I'm going to put a block here. This is like the first point. So everything inside. So these blocks here, uh, that one, that one, and that one will end up being taken out is the plan, right? And go up a little bit. I may as well just dig straight up and put another one. What is it? Three blocks into the air. So there. Two blocks and a gap. Okay. And then let's go one, two, three, four, five across. Is that five? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. And do the same again. Three blocks up. Put another one there. Okay. And then I want to go five in this way. Five, six. Okay. So there. Would be another one and then do the up Would be another one there and we should take all of these middle blocks out eventually uh, one two three four five so there and dig straight up one two three and I suppose the space chamber controller should go there so let's put that up there and put the controller there Okay, <clears throat> chamber not formed. Okay, well, that's okay. Building block there. We've got any idea where the chamber is. So at the minute it would be there. Builder at the southeast corner. And then I just need to connect the two together, I think. But I also need to put this shape card in. It goes in there, I guess. Yep. And put this on the side to give it some power. That should then give power directly to this. So where do we put the configuration for that? Let's output there. And that's receiving power. Yes. Okay. And it's going to be quarry. Okay. And that is 512 by 256 by 512. So it's quite a large size quarry. But I think I do need to connect these two units together. So, I think I know what it is that I need. Some sort of card. Um, some sort of card that links the two together. And I've just got to find it. It may be worth looking in the book, to be honest. Because I don't necessarily know where to find the card. Or what it's supposed to be. So, let's have a look in the book. Because I made myself one of these RF tool manuals for a reason. So, let's have a look. It does show you everything you need to know in here. So, uh, the builder. That's the builder. Yeah, we're going to need that, that, that. We've done that bit. Done this bit. That bit there. <clears throat> right click. A linked space chamber card. Okay. Space chamber card. That's what it's called. So, does it look like any of these? Let's have a look at space. 
space the space chamber card channel not set sneak right click the space chamber controller and then right click in the air to show an overall area of content right insert into the builder to copy or move a linked area okay so i need to make one of those simples simples oh man this is going to be this is going to be good if it works when it works if it works i'm going to make it work it's going to have to work because i want a quarry and it's going to be fun <laughs> it's going to be fun it's going to be fun i tell you make it thank you so we got that all right so we've got one of those and i think i also need a chest to put on top of it i think that's a consideration that i had left out so that it can uh, take the blocks or put the blocks somewhere i will advance this technology and make it so it's automated a lot more uh, both the power and the delivery of blocks and all that but for right now i just want to get it working so i understand how it works and show you guys how it works so that goes there we can uh, right click on there channel set to one and then put it in here uh where do i put it do i put it in there yeah okay so right click the air to show the overall area insert into a builder to copy move linked area okay well i didn't want to copy move linked area did i so how do i make the quarry side of things work uh shift right click on there and we've got a contents of what exactly shift right click in the air we can see nothing right click on there and we can see nothing hmm okay so i need to do a little bit more work on this idea to figure this one out um maybe the quarry side of things uh aha that's probably it then so that's for moving stuff this one's for doing stuff so if i click this on there is that going to do it you can only do this on the builder uh-huh now select the first corner oh there now select the second corner uh there now settings copied into the shape card okay now put the shape card in there and it's not is it it's not doing anything okay i seem to have figured it out <laughs> it was just a redstone signal by the looks of it okay so let's let's clear an area right let's clear an area so we shift click on there and tell it to click the first corner okay so let's select the first corner as that one there and then let's go all the way down over here and <laughs> i'll show you this in another episode got a mob spawner just here and let's select this corner here Okay, now those settings are copied into the card. Uh, I can shift click and have a look to see what's in those areas. Uh, it's voiding out. Oh, I could select void out. Okay, okay. So I could void out cobble and gravel and sand and all that kind of stuff. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's nice. I like. So I could void cobble. I could void dirt. I could void gravel and void sand. Uh, but keep the stone. That's cool and then you put it into there right now it's set we don't make any noise and we turn it on and zip, look at that it just goes vroom, and just edits it off it just deletes it all and puts it all in the top for me what the, that's crazy man that's crazy it did use a lot of power though but that is crazy awesome i think that is crazy awesome it just it leaves all of the blocks that are left and just takes all the other stuff and voids all the cobblestone off that is crazy mad if only i had a massive power supply now that would be even better even betterer now another thing i want to test while i'm at it right is uh let's take that give me this give me this give me this thank you and let's let's take all of this why not yeah let's just take all of it I should probably do some lighting up before I go. So let's just make sure it's nice and clean and secure. Because I don't really want to have all the mobs coming after me from around this corner. Uh, F7. Yeah, here we go. Let's just quickly light 
this section up. There we go. Oh man, this is gonna be awesome. I love it already. All right, and then I can take this block. Okay, so I'm thinking, <clears throat> if it's just a matter of the card reading something, right? Then potentially I could have the builder actually set up at base next to a power supply. So yeah, what I'm thinking is I could put the builder here next to the power supply itself and it's going to receive the power directly from the power generation system and then I can take this out and I can uh, shift click there select the first corner okay let's select the first corner as that why not and let's go all the way down here and edit out a huge chunk of stuff over here Let's go with up here, why not? Uh, there. Okay, settings are now copied into the card. This is good, this is good, this is the way I'm expecting it to work. I can then throw it into there by right clicking on it. Install the module, yep. And then all I need to do is give it a lever and put a lid on the top, which I'll be able to put one of these control um, block controllers like one of these things on top I should think and then boom let it do the work it's using all the power up but it is doing all the work look at that it's cleaning it all out so as it receives power now it will uh, edit out all of that area instant quarrying really isn't it insta quarry which is epic love it Oh man, I'm so glad I found this. Thank you to the stream audience who pointed it out to me as a thing. But look, it, it now it's getting the power. It's slowly taking it all out. So I just need to select the uh, locations and then come back here. And it can actually do all the sorting at home base. Wow, look at that. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. I like it. <laughs> hey. Oh, yes, I like well, I'm going to have a play with it for a little bit. And uh, oh, I'm doing that thing again, look. Just as an afterthought, while I was carrying on with the diggy diggy, with the quarry quarry, <laughs> the awesome quarry quarry, I forgot to show you this. Uh, it's only a little little bit. It's only a, a little touch here, and it's just got this little tiny mob spawner in it. And it didn't really go very far. It just had a little round bit there. It was, it was never going to be found unless I done some digging and so I'm glad I did uh, but of, of course with the quarry digging all this out it meant that they could walk out of there and just came straight down at me so I had to quickly sort that out I couldn't save it for another episode so I lit it up and I thought we'd come and have a look at the chest together couple of mana steel nice let's uh let's zip. um name tag okay a spare bucket yep some pumpkin seeds don't worry about that dark boots though dark boots Two pairs of dark boots and a punch two ancient tome from Quark. Not bad at all. Okay, Nemson, finish your outro. I don't know what that is. Doesn't always do it, but it does it after I've done certain things. I don't know what it is. But anyway, that's it for today's episode. Thank you all very, very much for watching another episode of the Hypermine Unstable. I'm going to play around with this quarry and some more power generation and do more of the things that you've seen me doing this episode to clear out some areas and sort some stuff out. But I think it's amazing. That RF Tools quarry builder thing is amazing. So I'm going to get at it. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. And goodbye.